You know, with all the stores being closed, it's been hard to just go out and spend money frivolously, but I haven't let that stop me, thanks to the Facebook Marketplace. The Facebook Marketplace has been awesome. I just go on there and it starts showing me stuff I didn't even know I wanted. Anything from bikinis, I'm not sure how I got on my recommended list, homemade tamales, and bikes. And you know, every once in a while it gets it right too, with some electronics, like this monstrosity right here. Now, what is this thing? It's a Dell XPS Gen 5. It was listed as $20 with no information at all other than saying it worked. So I did some research and I found out they might come with something like a Pentium D Extreme, or it could come with just a Pentium 4. Either way, I really wanted to have it. My initial inspection showed that it was really dirty, but he did claim it worked. So when I got it home, I fired it up and it was working just fine and it had all the guy's personal stuff on it. That's the second computer I've gotten now that has all the personal stuff. What is it with people not clearing it out? So I got it all cleaned up and everything seemed fine and I finally got a chance to check the specs. This thing unfortunately doesn't have that Pentium D Extreme, but it does have a Pentium 4 670, which is one of the fastest Pentium 4s ever made, coming in at 3.8 gigahertz. Along with that, we've got four gigs of DDR2 memory and what I'm pretty sure was an upgraded graphics card, an NVIDIA GTS 520. So I had this giant thing just sitting around and I wasn't sure what to do with it, but then I got to thinking. The Pentium 4, you know, holds a nostalgic place to a lot of us, so I wondered, how far can I push it? How far can we go with it if I pair it with a modern GPU? So I started thinking, what graphics card should I throw at this thing? So I decided, what better way than to go all out with an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, a graphics card that probably cost close to as much as this computer cost when it was new. So being an older system, I was pretty much limited to Windows 7. And surprisingly, there was a Windows 7 64-bit driver. So we're gonna go ahead and get Windows 7 installed on this. I'm gonna put it on an SSD to give this thing all the chance in the world to perform as best as it can. We're gonna make everything bottlenecking at the processor with this. So let's go ahead and take a look inside and see what we're working with and see if we can even put this thing in there. We just swing it open with that smooth action. And here we go. So in standard Dell fashion, we've got a giant green fan shroud around the processor heatsink. Here is our GTS 520 that I mentioned before. It doesn't screw in. We've got a nice toolless design here. We've got a little door hinge here. There we go. And there we go. So I think it'll fit in here. Looks like there's physically enough room. Yep, she's in. Better. So, oh, can't, nope, can't, can't do that. It looks like we've only got a single six pin connector here. And this needs two eight pin. I didn't even think about checking the power supply. This uses this weird proprietary deal here. The power supply is the entire bottom here. It's not ATX, so yeah, I wonder what we can do. So, I mean, we could use a couple of these. I mean, it, these, these are fine, right? They, they wouldn't give them to you when you buy a graphics card if, if they weren't okay to use, right? We're out of Molex connectors. Uh, what do I, what do I do? Oh, I know. Here we go. This, this will work, right? I got a, a Molex splitter. So we'll just put this here. Yeah, this, this will work, right? Yeah. Why wouldn't this work? And we'll plug, plug that there. And then, oh, we're still, we still need more. I need more, I need more adapters. We got Mo Molex to say, no, that's not gonna work. More. No. I need more adapters. More. More. You know, I never checked if I could just put a different power supply on here. So when I first looked at this thing, considering it had a non-standard power supply, I assumed that it also used non-standard motherboard connectors. And if you look at this one, it kind of doesn't look like a regular 24 pin. It's got this like 90 degree thing going on. If we pull it off, it's just a regular 24 pin hiding under there. And then if you go under here, 
So if you look under here, there's just a regular eight pin motherboard connector. So all I'll do is I'll just grab another power supply, plug it in, no adapters needed. But this would have worked, I swear. You just keep adapting it. More and more adapters. And just like that, we've got power. No adapters required. And the cable management, it's beautiful. Enough messing around, it's time to fire this thing up and see if it works. Got a cursor there, come on, no boot screen. So we're back, it's been a minute. I had some issues, surprise, with that uh, RTX 2080 Ti. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it to install the drivers correctly. Like, I'd, it'd work fine, it'd be in the boot screen, I'd see it in Windows, and I'd go, and I'd install the drivers, and as soon as it restarted, I'd get a black screen after the Windows is starting uh, screen. I tried different drivers, I tried rolling them back, everything. There's tons of threads online about people having issues with, you know, similar things. I could not find a solution to it. So, unfortunately, I did have to scale the experiment back a little bit, and I'm just running a regular GTX 1080. Now I'm sure this will still be bottlenecked just as badly, but you know, it, it doesn't have the same pizzazz as running a 2080 Ti on a Pentium 4. But we're gonna make the best with what we got. We are up and running here. I've got, got Windows installed on an SSD. I've got all my games that I wanna test installed on a separate SSD. So hopefully we are gonna give this Pentium 4 all the chance in the world to show what it can do. First up on our list is Unigen Heaven. I ran this at the high setting at 1080p resolution. Everything seemed to be going fine with this until I hit my first blue screen. After a little troubleshooting, I determined it was the RAM that was the culprit. So I dug through my stash and found some extra sticks that worked for this machine and swapped it out and didn't have any issues after that. You can see here that while the benchmark is technically running, it's not really running very well. The frame rate floats around the 20s with uh, dips all the way into the single digits. The highest I think I saw was into the 40s and that was only for like a split second. Once the benchmark was finished, we were able to see our FPS averaged at 22.7 and an overall score of 571. Next up was 3D Mark Fire Strike. I was gonna run Time Spy, but I thought that was gonna be a little unfair to the Pentium 4, so we're gonna go with the older benchmark to give it a fighting chance. Other than taking forever to load, this benchmark actually seemed to run okay, but the score at the end will tell us the full story. Another thing to note, this is the only thing I tested that caused the graphics card's fans to actually spin up. Everything else, they just sat at idle. And once it was done, it came in at a score of 2060. That actually seems okay, though to tell you the truth, it's been a while since I've compared any kind of Fire Strike benchmarks, so let's take a look at the compare results and see where we're at. Oh, okay then. Well, moving on. So when it came time to test games, I decided to start with older games and work my way forward to see when I hit the diminishing returns. And first up was Half-Life 2. When I first loaded the game up, it seemed to run pretty well, and that was with the recommended settings of everything being high and 1080p resolution. When I was in interior areas of the level, I was getting well above 100 FPS, but as soon as I stepped outside, it tanked down into the 20s. So far, this isn't looking good for the testing. I mean, this game is a couple years older than this processor, and if we're already getting results like this, I can't imagine it's gonna get much better. Next up was Metro 2033, the original version. I set this to normal settings with 1080p resolution, and after my performance in Half-Life, I didn't have high hopes for this, but I was honestly surprised with how this ran. Not only did this game look great, but it stayed well above 30 FPS the entire time I played it. And if you hadn't told me that I was playing on a Pentium 4, I would have never known. Look at that little chip go.
Next up was everybody's testing favorite, CSGO. And after the surprising results with Metro, I got some very unsurprising results with CSGO. Everything's set to low with 720p resolution. And as you can see here, we don't ever even break 20 FPS. This was actually very painful. I actually played a couple rounds like this and surprisingly after a while you get used to that low frame rate and for some reason the game doesn't feel like it's actually slowed down with the lower frame rate. But either way, this is no way to play this game, so on to the next one. Last but not least was definitely a crowd favorite, Grand Theft Auto V. This game almost broke me. This I almost gave up because of this game. Not only did it take forever to install everything, we're talking upwards of an hour or two, and that's not the game, that's all the Rockstar stuff. I had the game installed on a different computer and then just moved it over. Once it was finally installed and playable, it would take probably five minutes to load the game to where I can actually get to a menu. And once I went into the menu and checked the graphics settings, any change I made had to restart the game. So add on another five minutes or so after I restarted. No matter what I did, I couldn't get it to be full screen, even though in the graphics settings it says full screen enabled. I had this set at 1366 by 768 resolution and I was stuck in this windowed mode. Once I finally got to the point where I could run the built-in benchmark, I finally got to see if all this was worth it. And what did I get? disappointment. As you can see, it's running at a glorious 10 to 12 FPS. I mean, even that's a little less than cinematic. But we all know benchmarks only tell part of the story, so I decided to fire up single player mode and see for myself what I got. And I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it for myself, but you're seeing it right here. Around 30 FPS, somewhat playable. I mean, I actually made it through the entire prologue here with no issues. Like I mentioned before, this thing is not working at all. Look at these fans just not spinning. The game's being played, and they're not moving. So while I was able to make it through the prologue with no major issues, things definitely went downhill once I got into the main city. The frame rate tanked down into the 10s, 11s, and I was having this major issue with this like input latency where my character would just start walking around on his own and just ignoring what I was putting in until like it caught up with me holding the button down. Like right here, it took me forever just to get in the car. Like I'm fighting the controls right now, trying to get him to walk into the car. Regardless of the actual performance we're getting, I'm honestly surprised that this game is even running at all. But after a couple more minutes of fighting these controls, I had to call it. I couldn't stand it anymore, and I had put up with enough torture trying to get games to run on this thing. So that's it. The answer to the question that nobody had. Can you game on a Pentium 4? Who cares? That's a dumb question. Of course you can't game on a Pentium 4 with modern stuff. Of course it's going to bottleneck the GPU. Did I expect anything else? It's not like this Pentium 4 is miraculously going to show me some amazing performance that was the best kept secret. The hyper threading, it didn't do anything. The 3.8 gigahertz, all it did was make this room hot and I sweat my butt off. This was not a fun experiment. It took me hours to get that footage you just watched. Between games taking forever to launch, some of them not launching and I have to figure out why, to the whole Grand Theft Auto thing. Don't even get me started, I don't even want to play that game anymore. Screw Grand 
I guess if you were curious how Opinium 4 performs today, there you go. And if you were curious of how it performed in just normal tasks, it was terrible. Web pages loaded slow, downloads were slow, anything I did, 100% CPU load. Check task manager, 100% CPU load. Everything. This was a terrible experiment. No one should ever slog through that again. Thank you for watching.